you know the deadliest day in the Israeli-Hamas conflict? It occurred on a Monday, when 24 Israeli soldiers lost their lives in Gaza. This day marked a tragic milestone in a conflict that has been fraught with violence and loss on both sides. This conflict reached new heights in October when Hamas gunmen staged a murder and kidnapping rampage, triggering a bombing campaign by the Israeli military. The main focus of these operations was in southern Gaza, particularly around the city of Khan Yunus. The city soon became a battleground surrounded by Israeli forces, its streets echoing with the sounds of war. On that fateful Monday, these soldiers were in central Gaza, laying explosives to demolish what was termed as terror infrastructure and buildings. Their mission was interrupted by an attack, a rocket-propelled grenade or RPG launched by Hamas militants. The RPG struck a building causing it to collapse on the soldiers. Most of the soldiers died due to this building collapse. In a separate incident in southern Gaza, three more soldiers lost their lives, bringing the death toll of the day to 24. This day was the single biggest Israeli death toll in a day since the start of this conflict. The Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu expressed his condolences and announced an investigation into the incident. The Israeli military's bombing campaign in Gaza continued, and the focus remained on southern Gaza, particularly around the city of Khan Yunus. The incidents on Monday brought the total number of Israeli soldiers killed since the operations began to 219. A grim reminder of the human cost of war and a testament to the deadly day that has etched itself into the annals of the Israeli-Hamas conflict. The fatal blow came from an RPG attack launched by Hamas militants. This attack, which took place in central Gaza, near the border community of Kisufim, led to a catastrophic series of events that resulted in the deadliest day of the current conflict for the Israeli Defense Forces, or IDF. The RPG, or rocket-propelled grenade, was aimed at a tank. The impact of this attack likely triggered a large explosion of the IDF's own munitions, which were strategically placed in two nearby buildings. The IDF had planned to detonate these explosives from a safe distance, but the RPG attack preempted this plan, setting off a disastrous chain reaction. These buildings, now turned into death traps by the unexpected explosion, collapsed onto the soldiers who were inside and near them. This sudden and devastating collapse claimed the lives of approximately two dozen soldiers, marking a tragic and deadly moment in this ongoing conflict. The IDF later confirmed this narrative, stating that the RPG attack had indeed initiated the explosion of their own munitions and the subsequent collapse of the buildings. Soldiers from a research and rescue unit were quickly dispatched to the scene, their mission to recover the bodies of their fallen comrades. In addition to the 21 soldiers who lost their lives in the RPG attack and the collapse of the buildings, another three IDF soldiers were killed on that same day, bringing the death toll to 24. This deadly incident marks the single biggest Israeli death toll in a single day of the current conflict. The aftermath of the attack was devastating. The echoes of the blast had barely faded before the grim task of recovery began. A research and rescue unit was immediately dispatched to the scene. Amidst the rubble and wreckage, they undertook the somber mission of retrieving their fallen comrades. Each soldier recovered was a poignant reminder of the devastating cost of this conflict. The reactions from Israeli officials were swift and filled with a mix of sorrow and determination. President Isaac Herzog described it as an unbearably difficult morning, a sentiment shared by many across the nation. The loss of these soldiers, these sons and brothers, was deeply felt in the heart of every Israeli. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu didn't mince words when he described it as one of the most difficult days since the start of the three-month siege of Gaza. The pain of loss was etched in his words, but so too was resolve. This was a leader who was mourning, yes, but who was also steadfast in his commitment to his nation's security. In a rallying cry that echoed throughout the country, he declared, In the name of our heroes, for the sake of our lives, we will not stop fighting until absolute victory. These words, uttered in the wake of such a tragic event, encapsulate the spirit of the Israeli people, a spirit that, though battered and bruised, refuses to be extinguished. The Israeli Prime Minister vowed, we will not stop fighting until absolute victory. A promise that, despite the staggering loss of life, makes it clear that the fight is far from over. The aftermath of this deadly day serves as a sobering reminder of the harsh realities of war. 
but also as a testament to the determination and resilience of those who continue to stand in the face of adversity. The broader impact of this deadly day is staggering. As the conflict rages on, the toll continues to rise, with over 200 Israeli Defense Forces soldiers losing their lives since the onset of the war. On the other side of the battlefield, the Palestinian death toll is in the tens of thousands, with the Hamas-run Gaza Health Ministry reporting more than 25,000 casualties. Beyond the battlefield, a humanitarian crisis is unfolding. Gaza's medical facilities are overwhelmed, struggling to treat the injured amidst the chaos of war. Damage to infrastructure and a dire lack of resources are exacerbating the situation, with the enclave's civilians bearing the brunt of the crisis. Meanwhile, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu grapples with mounting pressure both domestically and internationally. The challenge? To navigate this complex conflict, ensuring Israel's security while also seeking a resolution to the war. Criticism mounts over his handling of the situation, particularly in regard to securing the release of hostages taken by Hamas. The situation in Gaza continues to worsen, with no clear end in sight. To summarize the key points discussed today, we've traced the events of a devastating day in the Israeli-Hamas conflict, a day that witnessed the loss of over 20 Israeli soldiers. This marked the deadliest day for Israeli troops since the war with Hamas began. The major incident occurred in central Gaza, where soldiers were laying explosives to demolish terror infrastructure. An unexpected rocket-propelled grenade attack caused the collapse of a building, resulting in most of the fatalities. In a separate incident, three soldiers lost their lives in southern Gaza. These events bring the total number of Israeli soldiers killed since the operations began to over 200. The Israeli military's focus remained primarily on southern Gaza, particularly around the city of Khan Yunus. In the aftermath, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu faces both domestic and international pressure to address the conflict and ensure Israel's security. He has been criticized for failing to secure the release of all hostages taken by Hamas during their October attack. As we reflect on this tragic day, we are reminded of the devastating human cost of conflict.